All right. So Jamie's about to join us. Like I said, she has been on all sides of the industry, close to 15 years. She's a Redkin artist, Sambia ambassador, and salon owner. Her passion lies in hair cutting, finishing, bridal hair, and editorial work. And she's recently been a Naha finalist nominated under uh, Team of the Year. So that's super exciting. And her strong design skills can translate easily into salon friendly techniques for everyone. So I hope you all get something out of this class. And let's welcome Jamie McDaniel. Hello, Ooh. hello. Thank you so much for that, Katie. I'm so yeah. excited to be here. It is beautiful. I'm in St. Louis, Missouri. I see that there's a Joplin, Missouri there. I'm like, I know where that is. <laughs> uh, it's actually beautiful out today, and I'll take all the sunshine we can get when these, uh, with these last few months or weeks of winter that we have. So thank you so much for having me here. Absolutely. I can't wait to learn from you. So I'm going to cut you loose, and I'm going to pin any comments that anyone has. So you guys engage with Jamie, ask her questions, and Lel, have you take it away. Perfect. Thank you. All right, so for the last year, couple, two, three maybe, there's been like curtain fringes on trend. And um, what's going on now is a lot of our guests are probably trying to grow out those curtain fringes. So with this face framing uh, fringe that we have here, what I've done is I've developed a way to get a little bit of them growing out on the sides, but still have like a little bit of a peekaboo right there in that center to where they still frame the face and they look super cute in any kind of ponytail as well. So we're like Katie said, we're gonna do two different models here, one with straight hair and one with curly hair. So let's just go ahead and jump right into the straight hair here and uh, we can get started. Let me go ahead and grab them. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is our sectioning. So with a traditional fringe, how I like to section and find there where that fringe naturally lives is I just like to place one of my hands at the top of the ear and then my other hand at the front, center front is what I like to call it. And then as you can see, where my fingers meet, that is a, what we call a change in direction of the hair. And so usually it's right there at that corner of the eye, but with this technique, I have a lot more hair coming towards the face in our styling. So I find that corner and then I just simply slide it back just a little bit to where I'm not going too far into the hairline on the sides. And I'm just adding a little bit more past the corner of the eye. All right, so I've gone ahead and blow dried her, smoothed her out, and blue dried her how I would like her to lay in our finished end result. So the next thing we'll do with our sectioning is we need to find right where that middle part is. So center front, right where that head changes from left to right. All right, so just a nice center part. And be particular with this. I think fringes tend to be a little scary because they're right there in the front of the face. So be particular as you need to be and take your time to where you can get it right. Heart might be pumping a little bit during the fringe aspect of it. So don't worry and just take your time. So going in with our Sanvia no bend clip, I'm just gonna clip away one side. So now I have my left side and my right side. Katie, I'm gonna have you go ahead and pull up that sectioning chart for us so they can take a screenshot of it. So this is our sectioning right here. We're looking at the left-hand side for right now. So you can see I have one big triangle outlined in bold, and then I have another tiny triangle that is dashed marked out in uh, red as well. So thank you for that, Katie. So we have our big triangle already. Now we're gonna come through and create our little triangle. There we go. And so what I wanna do here is, I'm not going to take my parting from the very top of my triangle here. I'm going to pull this hair towards me, comb it, Pull it towards me 
and then I'm just gonna come right in the middle. So here's my high point of my triangle and my fringe area. And now I'm just going to come right in the middle and draw another line to create a baby triangle. Once I have this, we'll come through and again, just flip this out of our way. I wanna get myself all set up that way whenever we go into cutting, Everything is set up and I'm good to go and I don't have to worry about resectioning anything. Does anybody else have a hard time with resectioning sometimes? I like to set myself up from the get-go. All right, so there's one baby triangle and now we're gonna do it on the other side. So again, combing this hair straight towards me and I'm just going to draw a nice line right there in the middle of my triangle. I'll give you a top view as well, so you can see that better. Working clean, that way I don't get lost. I'm coming in for the top view. So here's my little triangle, and then right in here, is my outside of the triangle. So I have a big triangle and then a little triangle. Welcome everyone that's just jumping on. Very glad to have you here with us today. All right, so I'm actually gonna start on the outside, the bigger triangle. So the bigger triangle is where it's going to really frame that face. So what I like to do is I'm gonna start and I get the longest pieces where I want them to be because how many of you have ever cut something and you're like, oops, I should have left that a little longer. I'm going to go ahead and throw myself under the bus there. I have plenty of times. And so I'm going to section out this front triangle here, and I'm really going to get it as close to the head as possible. So I don't really want to twist it. I don't want to do anything like that. I'm just going to come through here and get it as close to the head as possible with my no bend Sanvia clips. Because again, we already have it blow dry, so we don't want any bends in it. Starting on whichever side you'd like to start on, just release that outer part of the triangle. I'm going to comb that straight down into where it's going to live naturally whenever we style it. And I want my sectioning, my guide is actually going to come from the back part of this face frame. And I want to mark where do I want my longest piece to be around their face or to be around their chin. So I'm going to come through here and just lay it down like so. In our consultation, we'll already kind of go over that uh, with my client and say, where would you like it to be? And so they can tell me, but my client has confirmed with me that they just want it to be a little under their chin. So I'm gonna come through and pinch that little piece. And what you can do is you can use your mirror and confirm with them. Okay, is this where you want it to be? And that's the longest piece again. And then confirm with them and then I'll come in with my Sanvia razor. And I'll mark my spot. I like to use a razor because it keeps it nice and soft for me. Moving that out of the way so you can see that better. There is my longest piece that's going to really cup around their chin or their jawline. Now from here, all of this is going to be cut at once. So everybody in the chat box for me real quick, go ahead and write over direction in the chat box. Over direction. So here's a good principle to remember with over direction. Over direction is always a side to side motion. So wherever this hair lives, the moment that I pull it to the side, before and cut it, I'm creating some kind of over direction. So ask me real quick, what does over direction create? Great question. 
over direction is always going to give us weight and length in the opposite direction. This is going to depend, your section size is going to depend on how much you can control. For me, this is enough for me that I can take this in one foul swoop and get, uh, be okay with it. However, if you would like to subsection this out into two, do what you feel is comfortable for you to get to the end result. So coming over and pulling this all the way over to the opposite side. My fingers are going to match and mimic my part line here. So as I comb this over, I'm simply raking, not combing towards me. I don't want to pick up that center part. I'm going to turn my comb the opposite way and rake all those hairs towards the center of my being. I'm pausing at where that guide is. And all I have to simply do is flip this hair around my fingers and there's my guide. So I'm gonna stop there. Coming in with my Zambia razor, I have high tension here. High tension is going to be best with our razor. And if anybody is baseball fans, I like to say I like to choke up on the bat. So rather than being down here, I'm gonna choke up on my bat and I like to use my um, pinky to stabilize and then my pointer finger and my thumb on the razor itself. And now I'm gonna come in through here and if I want high texture, I'm gonna use large strokes. If I want medium uh, texture on those ends, I'm gonna use small strokes. I want some good texture. So I'm just gonna come through here. The moment I lose grip right there, I'm going to recomb back to myself, slide and continue on. And then just get rid of that hair. So when it comes back to the opposite side, what do we say that over direction gives us? Absolutely, over direction is going to give us weight and length in the opposite direction. So whenever we come back through here and we let this hair fall, we should get a beautiful line that falls from short to long and super soft. So I'm getting more weight and length here and taking off more weight and length towards the top. Easy peasy so far, right? Yeah. We're gonna do the exact same thing to the opposite side. This time though, I'm gonna switch it up in my tools because I'm that person that I have a lot of tools <laughs> in my toolbox and sometimes I can get my favorite, if you will, right? And so I'll tend to forget about the other one or the other 12 tools that I have. <laughs> and so I, what I've done is I found different ways to use these different tools to get me to my end result to help me work a little bit smarter and faster uh, going about these. So. Remind me again, where am I going to start with finding my subsection, or excuse me, finding my guide for this next part? We're moving over now to what is my left side. So my guide is coming from the where? The, by the ear, I love it, beautiful. Yeah, my guide is going to come from, we're gonna leave that there, and if it turns on me, it turns on me. My guy is coming from the very outside of where this hair is going to live. So by the ear, or I even say in the back. Yeah, in the back of the section. Coming in with a little bit of spray lotion. A little One United as a good cutting lotion for me. I'm not soaking the hair with it. I just want to use a little bit of it to get me, um, give me a little control. So just taking a small section I can actually hook this hair to keep it out of my way around the clip there. And now I just need to figure out again, where am I creating my guide? So here's my long piece. Here's my piece from the other side. I just need to mirror them. That looks good. Coming in, I'm still gonna keep it with my razor to keep it nice and soft and get release that hair. 
Now we're gonna do over direction again. So we're on the left side. Watch where my body goes. My body now comes to the opposite side. This is going to be a lot easier for us to pull to the center of our chest rather than pulling over and trying to cut it over here, right? It just becomes more comfortable for us and our guest. Let's do this. I'm done cutting this. I don't want to get confused by it. So I'm just going to clip this out of my way. That way I don't pick up any of that hair that's already been clipped and second guess myself. All right, pulling towards me again. My fingers mimic my parts, my parting. So I'm going to come through here. My comb is raking that hair. That way I have all of those hairs going in the same direction. And now I'm just going to pull that hair, bend it right around my fingers. And you can see ever so slightly that there is my guide. And I'm just going to come to that. Now I'm coming in with my Sambia reversible blending shears. I love these because these don't mess around. <laughs> They're going to take the hair off for me as much as I need. And what I'm doing is I'm just coming in here and I don't want to create a solid line. Let's see if I can give you, I don't want to create a solid line. I want to create something that has little nibbles on there, right? So it's going to give me some texture. So once I'm done with here, you've guessed it. I'm going to place it back into it where it's going to live styled. And again, just check for that natural short to long before we move forward. All right. I can release this and just double check balance wise. I think I am just a little bit longer over here. Just a little bit, but I'm gonna leave it for just some detailing in the end. All right, so we've created our cut on the outside big triangle. Now we need to come into the center. So when we're doing this, you can see that this hair, if we think of a curtain fringe, it tends to pinch in and then move around the eyes, yes? And so this is our outer bits that are really going to con uh, excuse me, contour the cheeks and really kind of lay really flirty, if you will, around the face, making it super cute for up styles, when your hair is down, anything like that. So here we go, moving on. And if you have any questions, just go ahead and put them in the chat box for me so I can see them as I'm moving through this haircut. Again, coming in with my Sandia no bend clips, and moving this hair out of the way. All right. Now we have our small little triangle is where we're gonna work with now. This is the only hair that we're working with. Our center is right here. And we're still going to work with over direction. However, it's not going to be as big. If I want less fringe and bang, can we do this with a smaller triangle, maybe even the small one? Absolutely, you can make this as big as you want or as small as you want. The only thing that I'll say, if you go bigger, just be careful of where this hair is going to lie when it falls. Because I have run into the problem before of cutting too far into it that you almost get a shelf on the hair that lays right here. So when you're doing this, just make sure that you're working and you're checking and seeing where that hair is going to fall if it is bigger um, when you cut it. But absolutely, you can do this smaller, you can do it bigger. It's really customizable for what you and your clients are looking for. And I love, to be honest, I love working on mannequin heads because mannequin heads are great for, you're very welcome. They take the stress away at first, if that makes sense. So mannequin heads are fantastic for giving me the creativity to create or the freedom to create without having someone staring back at me with real eyeballs. <laughs> All right, coming through here, 
just applying a little One United or any leave-in conditioner of your choice. And so now we want to create some over direction towards the center. So what I'm going to do here is where does my guide come from? So if I know that over direction gives me weight and length in the opposite direction, if I pull towards the center, I'm going to get the most weight and, uh, weight and length in the opposite direction over the corner of the eye. My shortest piece will be right in the center. So that is going to be where I find my guide. Again, this is going to be completely up to you and your client of how short do they want that center. I've created this super short um, for someone that likes a little bit more funk with it. However, I've also created a little longer to creep it to keep it nice and soft and flirty for some people as well. All right. Coming through. And you know what? I think right in the middle of the nose, the bridge of the nose will be a great place for me to put my guide. So again, I'm using my sand via razor. Maybe I'll take off a little bit more. And I just want to create some softness. That way when I come in, I'm not having to detail out a hard line again. The hardest line to make soft is a hard line. <laughs> so here we go. This is my center front. There's my guide. I want to make this a little bit more softer. I had zero elevation in that last one. So it's a blunt line with some softness on the edges. So now what we can do to make it more softer is everybody write elevation in the chat box for me. Elevation creates in principle based language layering or graduation doesn't matter where it's at on the head it's going to create some kind of softness. The moment you elevate the hair higher than 90 degrees horizontal straight out, the moment you elevate it higher than that, you're going to create even more softness on that silhouette. So I'm going to elevate it above 90, and I'm still using my Sanvia reversible texture shears and just take off that top part. I'm not recutting my guide, I'm just taking off that top part. Fantastic. Beautiful, I see that elevation coming through. And to keep control on this, I think control is probably the number one thing in hair cutting. Sometimes we just get lost because we lose control on it. And then we get frustrated and if you're like me, you just want to take the shears to it and texturize it all out until it blends. <laughs> but in order to have control on our hair cutting, we really have to keep it nice and simple. So not overwhelming ourselves. So I've released one of my sides and I'm going to work with this side first. So this side is going to be combed and over directed to center front to give me that nice over direction in the opposite corner. What if I wanted to do 180? That's a great question. So 180 is just straight up to the ceiling, right? So what happens when you elevate the hair higher? Do we create more softness or do we create more heaviness? If I were here, and I'm gonna create more softness by elevating over horizontal 90. If I go even higher, yeah, I'm gonna create more softness on there. Keep in mind, the higher you go, the shorter the layer is on top and the more length and weight you're leaving on the bottom. That's a great question. How would I adjust this for off-center part? Hold on to that question for me because I can visually show you that once I get done here. So now I'm combing everything to center front. My comb is leading me the way to center front. Once my spine is on center front, spine of the comb is on the center front, my center parting, I'm going to just elevate straight out from there. Check my elevation in the mirror, perfect. Bend this hair around. There's my guide. Beautiful. All I need to do is just slide to it. 
come through and release the hair. I love these shears because it already gives me texture on those ends and then I don't have to go back through and create any more softness on the ends. Beautiful. So coming through and you can see that this is already giving me short to long. I'm gonna give myself just a little bit of moisture through that hair so I can kind of re-sculpt it and move that around the eye. Perfect. So now I'm just gonna do the same thing to the opposite side. Again, I can tweak this afterwards. If we need to go in there and take off a little bit more length for our client, we sure can. If I need to bevel it, I need to keep that in mind too. Is my client going to bevel it more than what I have it styled? Because if she's going to bevel it, this might be the perfect length for her. If I go through and cut more off and then she goes home and bevels it, it could be up here in the center of her forehead where she doesn't want it. All right. Let's do the same thing for the opposite side. Release. Get all that hair going the way. There we go. Let me lower her for you. Okay. And so I'm good with this. I love it. I don't want to touch it. So what do I need to do with it? If I need to have control and I don't want to get confused, what should I do with this hair? Put it in the chat box for me. I'm going to do it while you're putting it in the chat box. Yeah, clip it away. Absolutely. So now all I have to worry about, <laughs> mirror image, is this and this alone, right? Everything else is out of my way. So all I have to worry about is this part right here. My guide is already there, right there in center front. We're gonna have our client move towards us, turn towards us, I should say. I'm gonna give you just a little bit more side view. And now I can come through here. What I like to do whenever I'm scooping up hair is I will use the wide side of my Sambia comb first, and then I'll flip it to the small side to make sure all that hair is moving in the way. The wide side just provides a little bit more air and looseness for me to pick it up. And then once I have all that hair picked up, now I can come through and elevate to center front. And again, notice my combing is coming straight from the back and I'm gonna push my spine of the comb to that center front, place my fingers and elevate straight up. Find my guide by just pulling this hair around. There they are. And slide to my guide. Perfect. So whenever I release it, again, I created over direction towards center front. So I should have a little bit of weight and length in the opposite direction. A little moisture. Here's what I like to do. I'm gonna break that set, if you will, that, that center line that may have formed by putting in the heart line. I'm just gonna break that up by going left to right. And then whenever I have that broken up, I can place that hair right around to where it frames their face. Now, I'm good with it. I can let everything down. and. It's kind of like building a house, right? You go in when you're building a house and the first thing you do is you lay your foundation. The shingles, the uh, all the other stuff that comes along with creating a house uh, and the fanciness comes in the end, right? So I created my foundation. Now I can come back through and say to myself, what do I need to edit to detail it out to me and my client's liking? So if it's a little heavy for me, I can come through here and go back over those steps. It's a little heavy. 
I still want over direction. So now I'm coming in, remember my toolbox. These are the invisible, uh, invisible shears. These are fantastic because this blade right here is blunt. And so now I can just come through here and weave it. Still creating over direction. Release that hair and just take a few little nibbles off those ends. That way when they come back through, it's less weight on those sides. There we go. Arm opposite. And then I can just have that peek right through. I'm gonna grab just a little bit of finishing spray for us. I'm gonna use Spray Wax by Redken. This is fantastic. And I'm gonna put a little bit of some weight some spray on those ends. That way when we come through, all that dryness and that frizziness that we might expect whenever you're working with dry hair and cutting it, coming through. And I like to call these my, my pinchers, if you will. So my thumb and my two fingers, my index and my middle finger, I like to call my pinchers. Your guests, could, you could easily show your guests how to do this on themselves too. I'm gonna come through and with my thumbs, I'm pushing down and then as I come through, I'm really just using these to shape it around the face. I could still tag on to this if I wanted to, uh, but as you can see, whenever you style it out, throw a little bend, throw a little wave to it, it really makes those cheekbones pop and then slenderizes right around that jawline to really contour that face for your guests and make them look really beautiful. So, how'd you like that? Sounds good? In the chat box for me, just write one thing that was your biggest takeaway through this process here on straight hair. What was your biggest takeaway from that friend bit? Welcome to all the new people that are joining us. There we go. All right. Yeah, the elevation reminder for softness. Haha, -ha, thank you for reminding me. I'm pregnant, so I have pregnancy brain. <laughs> what about the side part? Great question. So if they had a side part and you wanted to do this, it's going to be the same motions. However, your outside pieces and your center part are going to be just a tad bit different. So I would go in and lay your part. Create that, that still that bigger triangle inside the small, or excuse me, outside the smaller triangle. Where it's going to really differentiate is these pieces that you take your guide from. Right now we're symmetrical, meaning we're balanced from side to side because we have a center part. So we're symmetrical. If they have a side part, that means this hair has to travel further over here than this hair has to. So place your guide where you want them. But when you, if you were to lift this up to cross check it, this side should be longer than this side. Making sense? You don't want to cut that off because again, your longer side has to travel further to be visually balanced rather than symmetrically balanced, right? The only time we have symmetrically balanced, most times I should say, is within uh, a center part. Does that help? Faithfully yours, the great news is this is going to be recorded and will be forever on Sam Via's Facebook page and on his YouTube page. All right, so we're gonna move along to the texture here. So this is our mannequin. All these mannequin heads are from Pivot Point, by the way. Uh, like I said, I love working on mannequin heads because it gives you the freedom to create without having any of that stress put on you. I'm gonna swap combs. So before I was using a red, or excuse me, a black comb, now I'm gonna use a white comb so you can see the contrast within the comb and your lines a little bit better. The all, I shouldn't say the only thing, the major thing to take in consideration here when we're setting up our partings is our zigzag. So Katie, if you don't mind popping up that head form for me. 
Yeah. So here, textury hair, curly hair. I want a textury parting to match the texture hair. Thank you so much, Katie. If you need to take a screenshot of it. And so I've already come through and let's turn this guy. You can see with my parting here that they are already zigzagged. Um, the way that I like to look at this is, for me, what works best is the more textury the hair, the higher the texture, the bigger the peaks and the valleys within your zigzag. The lower the texture, the smaller the peaks and the valleys. You can see it's not perfect. It's just erratic, er erratic if you will. So don't get caught up on having perfect uh, peaks and valleys within your zigzag. I'm going to go ahead. I clipped all this out of the way so it wouldn't be in my way. Now I'm going to release this. Now my mannequin has been sitting uh, over the weekend, so I'm coming through with my continuous spray bottle by Sam Via. How many of us have this spray bottle out there? It is fantastic. And if you ever do use it in front of someone for the first time, they're like, what is that? So I'm just going to give it a few pumps and re-wet this hair down for me. So the first uh, model I did, we did it on dry hair. This one, we're going to do it on wet hair. Thank goodness they're a mannequin and they don't mind their face getting wet. <laughs> Hi, Joe. All right. Come through. Release all this hair. I'm going to use a few different uh, tools on our guest with texture hair. This model, this mannequin, is different from my benchmark mannequin. Their texture is. So my benchmark mannequin has a little bit of a looser texture than this one does. Not by much, just a little. I'm coming through. I'm coming through. All right, so you guys seen the first one. Well, the, for those of you that did see the first one, what is my first action? I need to divide it left from what? Yeah, left from right. Coming through, taking your time. I'm using the wide tooth of my comb. Once I have left from right, I'm going to comb that hair towards me. And... I need to divide it right in the middle, not at the top of the triangle, just right in the middle. I'm not going to do a zigzag there just because it's a little tedious to do that too much. I'm going to come in and do a different technique with my shear to give us that softness that we're looking for. I like it. Move it out of my way. Come on the opposite side, do it all over again. All right, comb this hair straight towards me. My parting starts right in the middle. Hot tip, where you place your finger underneath, your comb will guide to. I don't know how it happens like that. It's like magic, but your comb will always guide straight to your finger. I wanna make sure that they, are, they have a little bit of symmetricalness to them. Again, you can see I have my small triangle, and then I just clipped away my larger triangles. Where are we starting? Are we starting within the small triangle or the big triangle? Small triangle or big triangle? I'm giving you a hint real quick. I'll never set you up for failure. Yeah, we're starting in the big triangle. The big triangle is going to be our longest pieces. So I want to make sure I keep as much length of their liking and their comfortability for them. All right. So coming through here, same motions. Everything is the same. We find our guide from the outside corner. Where do they want that to lay? The only thing is, is I need to make sure 
that when I'm combing this and I'm laying it down, I'm not stretching this hair to find where they want their guide. I'm going to comb it into place, give it a little shake so some of that bounce comes back. Wish you guys could see a little bit better. My apologies. Give it a little shake so that bounce comes back. And then right there on that outside piece, I'm just placing my finger right there. I'm just gonna open it up a little bit. So now all I have is this little section. Now I think to myself, where do I want this to be? Sheer change. So these are Sambia sliders. These are fantastic because have you ever seen those people on videos and they're like, cha, 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 and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna cut myself. No, but just me, but okay, I do that. So these things are fantastic because it makes it easier to get those softer lines whenever you're going through and texturing the hair. You can see that the shears themselves are nice and curved and that curvedness Curved lines create soft lines. So these are his artist series slide cutting shears. So I'm gonna come through here and just pinch, pinch, pinch. Now once I have where I want it, I'm gonna come down. Let me do this for you. I would normally hold it like this and then my elbow would come up, right? Sometimes that can create a little bit of pain. So if you're here, Take that shear out of your hand, flip it upside down. Now with the same fingers, you're just gonna go in and now you have a neutral wrist and you can come down on it. So pinch, I'll show you again on the other side and just clip away that hair for where you want that texture to be. Capiche? All right. Grabbing all that hair again, making sure that the Wetness stays consistent throughout the whole process. Now I'm picking up with my wide side, creating over direction so my body goes to the opposite side. Wide side of the comb, and now I'm combing everything towards me. Just how we found our guide, same rules apply. I'm combing all of that hair towards me. My hands are going to mimic the subsection. Once I have that hair in there, I'm just going to give it a little shake to release a little bit of that curl. Find your guide. You're going to really use your hands a lot more here than your, your comb. So find that guide. Mine's right there. Now I can come through here. And with these same shears, I'm going to take deep, point cuts. If you already know that you're going to want some texture in there, stay here. Stay here. If they have a high abundance of hair and you're going to want to come through and take out a little bit, stay right where you are. What I don't want to do is I don't want to get so obsessed with having a straight line here because I'm already going to have a line. I don't want it straight because this is textured hair. Now I'm going to come through and create remove some weight right in the center. My shear is at a 45 degrees and I'm just guiding that hair, I'm not sliding down it. I am closing the blade all the way. So whenever I come through, I release some hair to release some weight. Now, whenever it comes through, I'll still have short to long from the over direction. See if I can do this. Short to long from the over direction. And my guide is still right where they want it. Perfect. I like it. I don't want to second guess it. I'm going to clip it out of my way. Here's where I just come in with my hands. Perfect. Do the same thing to the opposite side. Release it. So what was my hot tip when finding the guide with textured hair? Keeping a consistent palette of wetness. Rather than stretching it 
Thank you very much, Chelsea. Rather than stretching it, I'm going to comb it down into where it's going to live. Yeah, Stacy's got it. Don't stretch it, right? So we're combing it straight down. I'm going to give it a little jiggle, a little zhuzh, get that curl to pop back up. Now I'm just going to take a little piece here. Move all this out of my way. Beep. All right. One more time with the shear. So normally we would just come in and we would come over the top, right? Well, what happens is, is our shoulders lifted and eventually that can become pretty painful. So take your shears out of your hand. Do, do, do. See my thumb, see my ring finger. Everything is probably what you do. And then you're just going to take that out. And now the blades point to the floor. Now all you have to do is just insert your fingers right where they were. The great thing about his shears is that they have like a little training wheel up here, if you will, if you're getting adjusted to the ergonomics of them. So you can set your middle finger in there to get a little bit more balance uh, in there as well. Shake it out. And now I'm just going to pinch where I want to see that guy. Sorry, I need to put my body in front of it. That would help. Standing on this side. There we go. Body position matters. So there's my guy. Over direct. For those that were with us earlier, remind me of what over direction gives us in the end result. It gives us weight and what else? Absolutely, it gives us weight and length in the opposite direction. So I'm combing towards myself. I'm going to cut the hair and when I release it, I'm going to get short to long or, opposite, or excuse me, weight and length in the opposite direction. There's my guide. Shake it out. Use your hands just a little bit more. Loosen up that tension. Now, on the insides of my fingers, I'm going to come through and just deep cut that hair. I'm going to release some more weight within the mids. So I'm going to stay here and coming through with my shear at a 45 degree. Just nibble away some of that hair. The important thing that we want to Keep in mind with textured hair is, you know, I like to say the ends need friends, right? So I'm leaving a good amount of weight still on those ends, and I'm taking a good amount of weight in on those higher peaks and valleys. Oh, peaks, excuse me. Coming back over and just laying it back down. Fantastic. You feel good about it? Clip it out of the way. We don't want to get confused any more than what we already make ourselves sometimes. Now we're coming into the center part. Again, consistency within the water, consistency within the dampness of the hair. Yes, I love this water bottle. Give myself some nourishment, some One United. Yay. There we go. And my guide is coming from the center. I'm over direct. I'm going to over direct everything here to the center. So that's where my guide is going to come through. Shake it out. Get some of that texture back in there. Slide them forward. And now I'm just going to pinch. Since I know that this texture is going to shrink, I'm going to go a little bit longer than what we did. I'm going to go at the nose tip. So at the nose tip, I'm just going to pinch. Get rid of that hair. So whenever it dries, it'll dry a little shorter, but then I can go in and detail it out. But I know for a fact it's not going to get too short on them. All right, last time we did side to side. This time I'm gonna show you that you can do it all in a condensed cut. You just wanna make sure that all of your combing 
you take the time to comb everything exactly where it needs to be before you cut the hair. So I'm going to come from the right, the left, the left, the right, however you're looking at it in your screen. And I'm over directing to center front. Notice one comb from one side, another comb from another side. I want to keep it nice and balanced. My spine now is right at center. So now I can place my fingers where I want them and elevate straight out, looking for that guide to pop out. Take your time with this. There's my shoe. What gives us softness is elevation. So I'm elevating above the horizontal line of 90 to give us added softness. So coming through here and now this time I'm actually going to cut on top of my knuckle to release that hair. And again, with these shears, it makes it just a little easier to not get hard lines. And if I need to readjust, readjust, making sure you're staying at that center front. I'm gonna come from this side, boop, boop, boop. I do like to make noises, I don't know why. It just makes hair cutting so much funner. That's right, I said funner. And just release a little bit of that weight not too much, just a little bit. Now when we come through, we can shake that out. But you can even see here, see how that silhouette is nice and rounded out now and soft? That's because of where our elevation was. Cutting on hand, cut, excuse me, cutting on top of your hands will give you less tension. Yes, it will. It sure will. So now we can come through here and give it just a little bit of a bounce, right? I'm longer on these sides in the center, and then we just are going to add more length from our detachment that we created earlier. What I would do from here is I would go through and diffuse the hair to where you and your clients liking that are. I did finger coils here and I also since the hair was shorter in the bang I just used my comb and I my soft side excuse me my short side and I did a nice little twist on the way down with a lot of product in there and then I went through and diffused it. Once it becomes crunchy that's when you can go through and break that case but once you diffuse it then you can really truly come through and if you need to take off a little bit of length in here, you can come through and take off a little bit of length in there to just pop open that center of their eye. This is my favorite part. I don't talk a lot whenever I do hair cutting actually because there's just so much that goes into it and so much thought. So I'm just gonna pop that open and again, just place that hair you and your clients liking. Let's see if I can get you a better view here. So we have the nice sides here that still frame the face. So fantastic. All right, real quick, compared to the straight version, what is the biggest takeaway that you had with textured hair when cutting this face framing fringe? Compared to the straight, what was the biggest takeaway that you had with the textured hair with the face framing fringe. I call this, you gotta clean up the hair sooner than later because then you'll be hair skating around your whole salon. Zigzag part, I love that, yes. Removing weight in the center, fantastic. Texturizing with purpose, right? Cutting wet, yeah, you could cut wet. You can do this dry as well, but I really wanted to show you guys the two differences. Using rounded shears, yeah, those rounded shears are his artist series. Let me clean them off real quick. His artist series slide cutting shears. They're fantastic. Zigzag part, love it, all right. So just a little review on the tools that we used. 
Sanvia combs come in black and white. They're great for contrast. So when you're working on darker hair, use the white comb. When you're working on lighter hair, use the black comb. Helps to see that line to set you up a little bit better. Dry cutting sectioning clips are fantastic because if you are doing dry cutting, they're not going to give you a bend in that hair to where you have to restyle the hair. Ends need friends. Does that mean fuller peaks and deeper valleys? Yes. Well, I should say more fuller peaks and fuller valleys, if that makes sense. You don't have to, depending on how deep you take it, is how much weight and texture you're going to get movement, if you will. If you take it too close to the scalp, you're going to get what we call expansion. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, and then our shears, our tools of choice today. We have our Sambia razor. This is fantastic because it also rotates. My hot tip on this is choke up, just like a baseball bat. Have more control on it. Our signature series slide cutting shears with the rounded blades to create more softness. It pushes that hair for us. I call them this one the big kahuna. The big kahuna, which are the reversible texture shears. And this is going to take off the most amount of hair for us out of all of the texture shears. And then one of my, oh gosh, I love these guys, especially for finer hair that you don't really want to see like the, the bites within the texture. These are invisible uh, texture shears, blunt blade, the hair, the teeth push the hair over the braid. So you're getting like a scallop on there or a C curve. And again, curved lines create soft end results. If you guys are interested in any of these products, you can go on to sanvia.com. Oh, I can't forget my favorite one. The water bottle. Pew, 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 pew. Um, go on to sanvia.com and you can actually use my affiliate code uh, for an additional 10% off. And that is Jamie McD Hair 22. Pregnancy brain. Jamie, J A M I E, McD. MCD hair 22. You can also find me on Instagram and TikTok um, for all your tutorials, any education that you want. So also Sam is YouTube. Hi Katie. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Of course, the mute, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you so much. These looks were so salon friendly and so many great little nuggets buried in there that I took away. I love seeing the juxtaposition of textures too. So much learning going on. I, you explaining the hand, using hands versus combing, over combing on tex higher texture types was so brilliant. So yes, yeah. fantastic. Thank you for helping Thank everyone you. grow today. You guys follow Jamie, her pages are not only hilarious, but full of more content. And um, let's all send her good vibes as she's walking into motherhood in a couple of weeks here. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Like she was saying, use her affiliate promo code for ten, an additional 10% off Sambia tools. And um, thank you so much, Jamie. I'll see you in the thank green Thank you, Katie. Thanks for having me here. And thank you, everyone. I'd love to be tagged in your